Depending on when you watch this video, you might think I'm a complete bozo, but I, uh, I, I just got done installing that new Funny Playing IPS LCD kit in a uh, Game Boy Advance here, and you know it, it's all right. I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, the specifics, the there is some screen tearing, and you know, honestly, some games are worse than others. You you really gotta. I mean, ask me, maybe I can try it out, film some game for you, whatever, but just keep in mind it's not great for every game. Um, all that aside, all that to say, I did end up pre-ordering two kits. Kind of glad I didn't end up with like five or six, but that being said, I am really glad I picked up a second kit. Uh, I saw this case on the Funny Playing website as well. It was three bucks. I couldn't help myself, and I just think it's kind of neat. I ordered this at the same time as one of my uh, LCDs, and they shipped it at the same time, which I was kind of hoping they would, and they put my LCD kit in here, which is also pretty cool. So if you've seen the title of this video, you already probably know exactly where I'm going with this, but I was looking at the uh, ribbon compatibility here because one of the coolest things about this mod in particular is that this ribbon adapter for this screen supports both 32-pin and 40-pin Game Boy Advance consoles. So I was looking at something that I picked up probably a few years ago, and you might remember this from that one video that I never made because I wasn't making videos back then, uh, but this is... A Game Boy Advance screen covered with hair apparently uh, but you might notice that the ribbon looks a little funny that looks almost like a Game Boy Advance SP ribbon right 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 see where I'm going with this so I looked at the, the screen there and I had a bit of a hold my beer moment let's see if this works uh, unfortunately my the the bail is broken for this cable here so it doesn't secure as tightly as it needs to but this plugs into a Game Boy Advance SP and allows you to plug in a Game Boy Advance not SP just Game Boy Advance LCD and use it on your SP now I don't know the specific reasoning behind it I mean, I, I guess if you have an SP with no screen and a Game Boy Advance screen with no Game Boy Advance to put it in, I mean, put two and two together, literally. But, I mean, I don't, I don't know who sat down and thought, hey, I'm going to make this product. It's going to sell millions. I'm going to make money. No, that's, that's not how it works. Um, it's a garbage product. I really don't recommend putting a Game Boy Advance screen in your Game Boy Advance SP. I just, I, I just can't see any reason to unless you literally have no other choice. That being said, I still bought the damn thing, so maybe, maybe that was the whole reason they just sold it to, so that they could sell it to morons like me who will buy pretty much anything. All right, so, and yes, I am fully cognizant of the fact that Funny Playing has announced a Game Boy Advance SP version of their IPS display. That's irrelevant. I already bought this. That's not out yet. Okay. So, probably seen this in some of my other videos, if you're familiar at all with my videos. Uh, this is a SP that I picked up from... Um, was it Japan for you? I normally don't buy consoles with water damage, but this one was an exception because I didn't know it had water damage. Uh, I ended up having to reroute some traces. I ended up replacing the, um, the volume potentiometer with a volume wheel out of a Game Boy Color. And then just a few days ago for shits and giggles, I replaced the charge port with a USB-C port. That's one of Blind Eye's new mods there. Pretty cool. I haven't had any issues with it so far. Um, 
The only thing is, is it no longer works with my uh, Game Boy Advance dock, but I mean, that was kind of expected. All right, so we'll know right away whether this works or not. So this goes in here like so. And you know what, just for shits and giggles here, this monstrosity of a screen. I did already order another one of these cables, but such is life, it has not yet arrived. And I have no idea why this is falling apart. The screen, that is. I don't remember what the hell I did to it to cause such issues, but ta-da! There's that, and of course, oh, it shut off because the battery fell out. I was wondering why I wasn't getting very far. This time I'm holding the battery in. But ta-da! Okay, that's enough of that. So let's try... Let's try something new. Alright. I'm fairly confident in saying no one has done this before. Or maybe this is exactly how they filmed their uh, Instagram video of their new SP screen. And by the way, just like my other ribbon, this one is also pretty scratched out. That goes like that. Ah, uh, of course it was too much to hope. Let's see if the SP is even working. Oh, that's probably why it's not working. <laughs> so, yeah, of course it would help if the bail on this thing wasn't broken. But such is life. I can. That is such a dumb idea. That's also not that great of an idea. I'm just trying to close this frickin' bale here. Oops, sorry, I'm mumbling. But yeah, of course I ordered another one of these. Has not yet arrived. But such is life. That might be why it's not working. Oh, there we go. That looks a lot more promising. Okay, plug that back in there. <laughs> Sorry. I realized that was a little over t over the top and ridiculous. I'm just. I'm just a little stoked about this. Alright, so I would call that working. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Okay. That's enough of that. I'm going to... I'm just going to send it. So, this time around, I'm going to remove this tape. Luckily, it hasn't gooified. 
but you know that was a long time ago I've learned quite a few things since then such that on electronics if you need to use tape you use Kapton not electrical Ooh, that was almost bad Such is life with a broken bale. By the way, I prepared this for the last video and I completely forgot about it. I was flashing a Donkey Kong cart and I've just been letting this thing sit for two hours by complete accident. It's pretty good battery life though. Okay, so. Oh, yes. Let's try out what I tried on my last Game Boy here. This is set to 2.4 volts. That's a little bit too low for what I want to try. I don't think a GBASP will boot on that. And of course, I don't have a flathead handy. No, because that would make my video look like I prepared for it or something. Which, why would I prepare for a video? That's no fun. You and I both know we like to, I like to wing it. We're going to set that to 4 volts, give or take. And bottom one is positive. This is why the IC hooks come in handy. Top one negative. And Oopsie doodle. I've already got the game in. Let's reconnect up my original screen here. Oh. That was a disaster waiting to happen, wasn't it? So, you may notice right away that the milliamp draw is significantly less than my other consoles. Now, that is for two reasons that I know of, and possibly more. The first is that that is a much higher voltage, all right? The uh, battery cable just fell off, so the console shut off. But because that was a higher voltage, I don't remember what it was, but luckily it was uh, being filmed there. Um, because it's a higher voltage, it's drawing approximately the same wattage, so the volts is the volts are lower. Because if you remember your physics class, high school physics, if you took physics. Um, wattage is volts times amps so four times if it was about 30 let's try that again i guess so now it's 38 ish 39 with the front light on with the front light off <laughs> holy shit it is 16 and a half that's insane okay Let's try it out with the new screen here. All right, sorry about that. Phone decided we were taking a quick break here. So I already uh, tested this out, but I'll test it again just so the camera actually captures it this time. Um, with the screen, it pulls a little bit more than double current there. It's, it's a, th oh, wow. I swear when I did it earlier, it was double. It's at about 60 right now. Of course, the brightness button does nothing, which is to be expected, but whatever. Anyway, more data. The repeatability is interesting. I don't know why it's varying so much. Oh, wait, let's try the actual menu there. 
Now, I noticed the brightness just went down. I don't know what's up with that. But now we're pulling 48 in the same situation. 50. We'll call it 50. But, yeah. Let's, let's move on. I'm sure you guys want me to get to the point. And to be honest, man, I'm, uh... I gotta get up early for work tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so while I was waiting for the camera to cool down, I was going through my parts bin looking for uh, an SP screen, and it, I don't recall if you guys recall. Well, I recall. I don't know, I suppose you wouldn't recall if you didn't see the video. But when I did the clear SP shell, the fully clear one at my other desk, I went ahead and replaced the lens with a glass lens. Turns out that was my last glass lens. And I'm kind of regretting that because had I known, I would have loved to use one in here. And I mean, this original lens is still in really good shape, but I don't want to use the original lens. I want to save that because I'm just going to pull the whole screen out of here. And oh, before I do that, Let's remove this. So, yeah, sorry if I'm rambling. Again, I'm a little tired. But this is just... I, I wouldn't be able to sleep if I went to bed. I st I'll still probably won't be able to sleep. Be too excited about this. But if the uh, Game Boy Advance install is any indication, I shouldn't have to do any trimming to get this to fit. Now, I'll probably eat those words in just a minute here, but, but, God, this thing is so thin. Oh, you know what? Here. Let me grab my calipers and measure this. So there is a small protective film on the screen, but it's really not that thick. This entire screen is 1.64, 1.65 millimeters thick, all right? Compare that, this is a backlit screen. Compare that to an original Game Boy Advance screen. I'm going to kind of squeeze through the foam there. That's 2.3 millimeters thick. Now, let's take... I literally just... Oh, it's right here. We're going to zero out the lens. This screen is 4.5 millimeters thick. This is... Uh... Oh, I guess go to a spot where there's no um, no foam it's a little bit thinner 4.34 and of course there is a small sticky gasket between the lens and the screen that I'm not accounting for but yeah this this thing is nuts how thin it is okay um, and while I'm at it for those wondering screen itself is 73.6 millimeters tall by 52. Point, I call that 52.5 millimeters wide. And if the caliper said something different that I didn't say, I apologize. But that's why we did it on video. So, to be completely honest, that would actually look pretty sick with no lens. Doesn't actually, the opening is a little bit bigger than the screen though. So I don't like that. <sighs> Damn though. I mean, how does that look? That thing looks sick. Out of sheer curiosity, I did grab a GBA lens. <laughs> Shove that in the hole. <laughs> 
have glass ones of these. That doesn't fit though, so we'll, I'll use this one. So I'm going to get my aging cart, which I have misplaced. Sweet. Oh dear. Is that it? No. This is why you don't take Game Boys apart at nearly two in the morning. Well, okay. I'm not gonna use my aging cart then. I'll use Pokemon Emerald. Plug that in there. Boot it up. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to stick the lens on. I hope I never have to remove this. A smarter person than I would remove this adhesive entirely. Or perhaps wait for, oh, forgetting something here. I didn't even do this on my other Game Boy. I'm gonna try and center that as best as possible. wanted the uh, test pattern, I would have made this a little bit easier. But oh my god, that looks so sick. Now, my phone might cut off again pretty soon here. This time it's not a heat warning, it's a battery warning. I apologize, guys. I'm, uh, I'm on a roll here. If it does, I won't skip too far ahead, I swear. So, on an interesting note, I'm going to have to fold the other one back. Forty pin connector. I'm gonna twist that in a little loop like the original. Shove that in the hole there. Or not. Come back to that in a second. Well does this fit? Not very. Alright. I'm going to pause the video for a moment while I find some spacers that I can use to hold this in place a little bit better. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. I had to plug the phone in. It was dying, but I had a pretty good idea. If you order, if you see my other video, you see that it comes in this little black box here. Well, there's foam in there. I just cut off two strips, stuck it down with some double-sided tape there, and that'll be perfect. I'm going to try and twist this ribbon up a little bit. Don't want to kink it, but I do want to I do want it to hold its shape. So I can shove it in there and close it up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put the top on. Oof, it's just one of those nights. There we go. Oh, shit. Wait, I didn't think about this. I gotta solder those on first. Okay, so we're gonna do brightness control. Because I want to. I think it would be cool. And besides, SPs have a uh, brightness button. How lame would it be to no longer be able to use that brightness button. Okay. 
and just to try and make it a little bit easier on myself, I will use blue for select. Again, all 30 gauge kind of wire. The solder points are right down there. Solder is right there. L. There's R. And select. Again, just a little bit of tape. And this is a clear shell, so I should try and do that neatly. Didn't happen, though. Alright. Pull that ribbon. Now, it should settle down eventually. Oh, shoot, that has to go through the ribbon there. Probably should have made those longer too. Shit. Oh, and here's something interesting. The ribbon itself is a little bit too long. I might have to fold this up. Or I could cut it. That is dangerous game to play though. I don't really want to fold it either, but such is life. Okay. I definitely should have cut these wires longer though. I probably should tape this up. I'm having a real difficult time with this. Probably going to end up titling this video, How Not to Do This. 
So I have no idea how you're supposed to make this behave. If I just shove it all together, it'll flatten out. It's not happening. Maybe the answer is double-sided tapes. Cure this to the LCD. Let me try that. Don't have to go far. I got some right here. So if you've ever ordered a custom lens from Bluish Squirrel, this is the double-sided tape that he ships with his lenses. It's good tape. Very thin. Very sticky. Very difficult to use if you don't have any fingernails. So that will hopefully make my life a little bit easier. Realistically, I should have bent that the other way, but there's no undoing that. And then I probably want to tape that down as well. That I'll use Kapton for. Where'd I put it? There it is. Aside from the fact that these two are not designed for each other, the uh, problem is that the funny playing ribbon is expecting you to bend the uh, their ribbon up, whereas the Game Boy Advance SP ribbon is expecting you to bend it down, because that's the difference between the screens in the two consoles, really. Get in there. Okay. This might be the tickets. You can see how stiff this ribbon is. It's lifting the whole frickin' screen. Oh, you know what? I just realized why this isn't fitting. This needs to be trimmed. Damn it. All this time wasted. I gotta trim this. I will be right back. Um, I'm going to... I'm gonna trim it, trim it with the Dremel because this is a clear shell. And I think I can do it nice and clean that way. So give me just a moment. All right, got that trimmed up. It could have gone better, but it could have gone way worse. It's hard to tell unless you're looking for it on the outside, but on the inside you can see where I trimmed it. So I'm thinking, hopefully, I've got it now.
Yes. That is fitting. It's going to be pin in the butt to get together. But I think I can make it work. And I think that whole time that was my problem. I just need to trim that little area. Okay, I did a couple things while I was waiting for the camera to cool down. I put in these uh, little rubber bumpers and I put the hinge cover on. Uh, I think we're going to be alright on the length of the wires. I forgot this blue one doesn't have to go all the way down to um, select because I'm going to be using the brightness button on here. And you can either use this test point right here which looks like it's labeled C67, but trust me, it's not C67. Uh, or you can use the side of the button itself. I'm going to use the side of the button itself because that's going to give me a little bit more slack. And I would like to make this as easy as possible to assemble. Because SP is already kind of a pain in the butt. And I've already probed this out with the multimeter. You can use either of the bottom two points on the button, either point labeled 2 or point labeled 4. And then we're just going to guess and check as far as the shoulder buttons go, but it's the same as the AGB. It's the left connector there on both of them. I need some tweezers. Just had some. There they are. Now there are a bunch of people partying around here. It's kind of sad, actually. I'm staying up all night playing with Game Boys. People are, are, are home, I guess, not out partying. And if I'm right, we should be all good to go. For assembly. It's clearly not done. <sighs> and of course, of course. I have the membrane and I have misplaced the, oh there it is Whew. must have fallen out while I was moving it around okay so put that like that open it up give myself some slack on this ribbon feed it between those and try and uh Send it home. That'll do. There's no wires mounted running crazy everywhere. Come on. 
All right. We're going to try it out now. Probably be better off to try it with the bottom on, but... Oh my god. Oh, damn it. Yeah, I can't even hit the shoulder buttons without the bottom on. Oh, and I have it backwards. Go figure. Alright, well... I'll fix it. What the hell. If you don't have time to do it right now, when will you? Good thing I left the soldering iron on. Shows how confident I was, right? <laughs> Flip the ribbon cable. Try not to melt the connector. Oh man. Seriously, I shouldn't be doing this right now. I can do this without tweezers. I just gotta flip it around. Okay. Hear that? The iron's off. One of those is mounted under the button a little bit, but it will. Now, I'm already disappointed to report an issue with this thing. I mean, unrelated to the actual screen itself, the build quality of the screen at least. There is an issue with my assembly here, and that has more to do with me being a complete and utter moron. You can, if you decide to do this at home, which to be honest, Trimming that to fit was a lot easier than trimming a Game Boy Advance. There was a lot less to trim. Didn't have to worry about a centering bracket. Because, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, and, uh, you know, once you hear this, you can't unhear it, so I apologize to those who don't already know this, but Game Boy Advance SP screens are not centered from the factory. It's not a conspiracy. That's just how they are. They've always been like that. Ain't shit you can do about it. Even with an aftermarket case. Okay. Take a look at the left here. See that's seven millimeters and the right? 5.5. Huh? Huh? Yeah. That my battery. One day I'm gonna have to get a new screw cover here, or screw rather. And the game I've already decided I don't like on this screen. Damn, if that doesn't look good. You can adjust the brightness with the shoulder buttons. 
guess I'm battling the gym leader now, but yeah, that is wicked cool. Well, thanks guys for joining me on a late night escapade into the unknown here. I want to show you my, uh, my mistake. You can see there's a little piece of something under the fucking lens. <laughs> Whatever, I'll put a glass screen in here eventually. But I think the uh, foam actually worked out amazingly. This all looks good. I can see the ribbons kind of curling up a little, so maybe double-sided tape wasn't the best idea. And I can see there's something in there. Just loose debris right above that red wire. Don't know what the hell that is. But you know what? For 30 bucks, 5 bucks, this screen looks a hell of a lot better in an SP than it does in a Game Boy Advance. And, you know, I my personal preference is the AGS-001 compared to the 101. Uh, but... Zero zero ones, man. They're dirt cheap, and I'm I'm sure you guys would love to take these front lit consoles and backlight them, and you can use this front light for something. Please don't save the screen if it's still intact. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's your console. Do what the hell you want. Um, but let me know in the comments, I guess, if you think this mod is dumb as 